A voice from space, a Russian voice, a day of jubilation in Russia and a date to remember. Yuri Gagarin, the world's first human space traveler. He took off from an undisclosed missile launching base this morning, strapped into a five-ton spaceship perched on the nose of a rocket. Then he went higher and faster than any human being has ever gone before. 188 miles above Earth at speeds of about 18,000 miles an hour. An American is on the surface of the moon. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. At last, the space shuttle Columbia is in space, and its two astronauts say it is handling even more smoothly than they had hoped. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. The crowd began to smell success. This means more to me than any other, I think. What does it mean to me? A whole opening up of a new world. It's been a historic week that saw the high-flying construction crew stack separate American and Russian components to create a seven-story building in the open shuttle cargo bay. Two of the astronauts spent more than 21 hours working outside the tower in three spacewalks. It will fly unpiloted for the next five months until astronauts arrive in May to deliver supplies and do more construction work. Taking off at sunrise in what's being billed as the dawn of the age of space tourism. That's because Spaceship One has proved that it's possible. Dropping from a carrier plane at 14,000 meters with a rocket burning a strange brew of rubber and nitrous oxide. That's laughing gas. And it worked again. For the second time in a week, the stubby little spacecraft roared upwards at three times the speed of sound. And it's a fantastic view. Uh, there's a freedom there and a, and a sense of wonder that um, I tell you what, uh, you all need to experience. 